Jesus. Say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come to worship you. Worship you with all of my heart. And I bow down to worship you. And as I come before you, See it again, Lord, I come, Lord, I come to worship, to worship you.
Let all the earth rejoice. Oh, he wraps himself in light and darkness, and darkness tries to hide and tremble.
big shout of praise, amen, he's worthy, he's great, he's glorious, he's marvelous, he's awesome, he's the great I am. Glory, honor, praise belongs to you, Jesus. Amen, amen. You're great and glorious, Lord God. Your greatness is unsearchable, Lord God. Amen. We give you praise, give you glory, we give you all the honor, Lord God. Hallelujah. Be lifted up, Lord Jesus. Amen. We serve a big and an awesome God. Amen. A God is big. He is a God who makes the heavens and the earth. He is a God who knows each and every stars. Amen. And the fascinating thing about a God is that this God, this great and mighty and awesome God, He's the God who wants or who, who resides in our hearts. Amen. So, a very good morning to each and every one of you, and greetings to you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Like David says in Psalm 122, I'm glad when they say unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. So, I would like to take this opportunity to thank our Apostle and also Pastor Denny for giving me this chance once again to be standing here to deliver the Word of God. And I'm just an instrument. I'm nothing without God. And I'm glad that being an ambassador of God, it's a privilege and it's an honor. So, our text this morning is taken from the letter of Paul to the Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 26. It says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. And the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other. To keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immor immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmi enmity, strife, jealousy, fists of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warned you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its, with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come here before you, Lord God, to thank you for this wonderful morning, Lord, that you have given to us. Lord, we know, Lord, your presence is here. And Lord, 
I'm just an instrument ready to be used by you, Lord. And Lord, I pray, Lord, that, Lord, whatever we're going to hear today, Lord God, what you have for us, I pray, Lord, that we will understand your word, Lord. And Lord, may each and every one of us, Lord, who are here, Lord, and those who are watching, Lord, will be transformed by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. If you read verses 16 and 17 of Galatians chapter 5, it says, Walk by the Spirit, and do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to prevent you from doing what you would. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. These two verses... It calls us believers to walk in the Spirit so that we will not fulfill the desires of the flesh. The moment we become Christian, we have freedom from sin and the Holy Spirit dwells in us and the Holy Spirit become our helper. He become our counselor. He become our guide. But although the Holy Spirit enters into us and we become a new creation, as Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, we are a new creation living in an old body. We are a new creation living in an old body. And although we are made righteous in the sight of God and given the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome sin, we are still or we still have an old nature, which Paul called it the flesh. And in Romans chapter 7, verse 18, Paul says, Nothing good dwells in our flesh. And despite being set free from the, from the penalty and the power of sin, remember, we have not been set free from the presence of sin in our world and in our condition. The flesh and the spirit are complete opposites as evidenced by the works and the fruits. The desire of the flesh is always against the desire of the spirit. It seems that the flesh resides in our predominant doing. That is what we commonly want to do. And in the spirit, it is our dominant Desiring, that is a desire to control or a desire to dominate. And Paul says something similar in Romans chapter 7 verse 19. It says, for the good that I want, I do not do. But I practice the evil that I do not want. For the good that I want, I do not do, but I practice the very evil that I do not want. Based on all of this, I've titled my message as The Flesh versus the Spirit. In Paul's writing, the flesh stands for the natural desire of a person operating apart from God. A person who has not been raised to life spiritually is still in the flesh. And to Paul, a person who is spiritual is the one who has been born by the Spirit. And once the Spirit of a person has been raised to life by the Spirit of God, the old desires of the flesh do not immediately disappear. 
There is still a battle that rages on. And we see that the flesh and the spirit are in conflict with each other. It was for this reason that Paul encouraged the believers in Galatians chapter 5, verse 16 to 17. So I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. So my beloved brothers and sisters, let us walk in the spirit and also allow our lives to be led by the spirit as written in verse 18. A person who is led by the spirit will do what, what is right and will not be under compulsion of the law. Thus, he is not under the bondage and condemnation of the law. Amen. And further in Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21, Paul explains the works, the works of the flesh. Huh? The acts of the flesh are, are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, and so on and so forth. These are a depressing list. And we see so many so-called Christians satisfy the desires and wants of the flesh by indulging in these sexual sins, by indulging in these sins which are connected with pagans, by indulging in these sins of temper and sins of drunkenness. The reason why the, why the works of the flesh can be so tempting is because our natural our sinful inclination is driven to pursue selfish desires. And these temptations are alluring because they often promise quick and easy gratifications. And just like the apple in the Garden of Eden, we, we may fall into the trap of believing that these works are harmless. Just like Eve, we may, we may believe that giving into this temptation will grant us freedom that we never known before. But in the end, we all know about the story of Eve. That's why the enemy will always attempt to use the same trap that he used for Adam and Eve. He wants to make these works of the flesh as appealing to us as possible. And the enemy is so cunning. He does this in a way by, uh, by planting lies in our minds, such as, uh, it is okay to tell one small lie. Or, it is okay. It is not harmful to have just one, just one more drink. These are the lies huh, that the devil comes to our mind. But the moment we believe in these lies and give in into these temptations, we will soon discover that these acts do not lead us to freedom but they will only bring us shame. They will only bring us guilt. And they will only bring us regrets. Mark this. The consequences of sins can physically and emotionally harm us. It will harm others. And also it will harm our relationship with our loved one. That is a fact. The consequences of sins can physically and emotionally harm us. It will harm others and will harm our relationships with our loved ones. That's why Paul admonishes us on the outcome of this lifestyle. In verse 21, he said, I warned you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not 
inherit the kingdom of God. This is a warning. Here Paul warned us that if we go down into this road, we see that if we yield to the flesh, we will not inherit the kingdom of God. Paul's list of the works of the flesh, it, it provides a powerful contrast with the fruits of the Spirit. In verse 22 and 23, Paul listed nine specific behaviors. And I read, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These, uh, these virtues are characterized as, as fruits in contrast to works. We see that Jesus Christ had all of these virtues, or he had all of these character, and God wants each and every one of us to develop, to develop these fruits in our lives. Amen? These fruits, they will serve as a guide for us Christians. It will serve as a guide for us Christians and, 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 and inspire to a virtuous and Christ-like character or behavior. These are the fruits of the Spirit. They will serve as a guide and they will serve us to be a guide as well as to inspire to a virtuous and Christ-like character. In John chapter 15, verse 1 to 5, we see that Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. In order to produce more fruit, we need to abide. We need to abide in Jesus. As the Holy Spirit works in our lives, He changes us gradually. Amen. He makes us holy in our character. And when we choose the spirit living within us rather than the flesh, we get this complete different set of behaviors. And although each one of us lives in the spirit, we are still free to choose how to walk. We can either obey the spirit or we can either obey the flesh. We can walk in the spirit or we can walk in the flesh. The most, the most logical for us, the most logical thing for us to do is to use our freedom to love and to walk in the spirit. Amen? But remember, huh, we are still living in this world. We are still living in the flesh. The pull of the world, huh? the, the physical needs, the pleasures are still present. So the question is, what should we do? What we must do? The answer is, we must feed on spiritual food and continually yield to God's spirit on a day-to-day, minute-to-minute basis. Amen? Feeding the Spirit and yielding to the Spirit can only be done by reading the Word of God. Can only be done by studying the Word of God. Can only be done by obeying God's Word. Amen? And also, can, it can only be done by, by prayer and fellowship, fellowshipping. Amen? We must also remember that the more one gets into the Word, the more he or she will desire the will of God. Amen. And also, mark this, the more a person gets into the world, the more he or she will desire what the world desires. This is why Paul asked the believers in 
Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 to 2. To seek the things that are above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, and to set our minds on things that are above, not on things that are on this earth. Amen? If we seek, if we, if we seek God and if we set our minds on things above, we will desire God more and more. Amen? Let us look at verse 24 and 25 of Galatians chapter 5. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we are living in the if we are living by the spirit we have crucified the flesh. Amen. We are done with the old nature and and sin has no mastery over us. And we are now in a whole new relationship with God. And we have no power. And we have the power to live by the Spirit. And not to do the deeds of the flesh. Furthermore, in verse 26, Paul gives us a final exhortation. It says... Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited or arrogant, provoking and envying one another. Paul says here that since we are walking by the Spirit, let us keep in step with what the Spirit says. Amen? The Spirit is going to direct, to direct us on how to live. The Spirit is going huh, to direct us on how to live a life that pleases God. We need to remember that each and every one of us who are here, we are just sinners saved by grace. So let us not be proud. So let us not be self-loving. But let us, and let us not envy one another. In fact, let us live a life huh, of love and harmony among each and every one of us. Therefore, I will conclude with this, that I would like to encourage each one of us to always walk by the Spirit. Amen? So that when we walk with the Spirit, and when we walk by the Spirit, we will not satisfy the desire of the flesh. Let us, by the Spirit, put to death any sin in our hearts and any sin in our minds, as well as in our words and in our deeds. Like Paul says to the Romans chapter 8, verse 13. And may each one of us seek a life to live, a life that reflects what it means to be a Christian in this world. Amen. And let us not, once again, say, let us not satisfy the desires of the flesh. Let our lives be led by the Spirit, as we see in Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Amen. We see that the fruit of the Spirit can only be seen in the life of Jesus. And if huh, we are called to be, or we are called huh, to, to live a life like Christ. So I encourage each and every one of us. Hmm? Yes, it's not easy. We are still living in the flesh. It's not easy. But if I share, huh, by devoting our time, by reading the Word of God, by spending time with God, by fellowshipping each and every one of us, we will live by the Spirit. Amen? We are still living in this world. Yes, we are still living in this world, but we are not of this world. I love what Paul says, imitate me as I imitate Christ. So my beloved brothers and sisters, 
let us imitate Christ. Amen. I have only this for the glory of God. Amen. I hand over this time to Pastor Danny. I would like to invite the music team to please come. Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. Thank you, Deacon Dondor. As he has rightly said, it is our choice. We have to make a choice. It is not impossible to live by the Spirit. It is not impossible to live by the Spirit. We can set our minds on the things of God. It is we who have to do. It is we. It is, it is our choice. We have to make a real, genuine, committed choice to follow what the Spirit of God says. How do you follow the Spirit? The Word of God is inspired by the Holy Spirit. When we read the Word of God, it is like we do what God wants us to do, what the Spirit is leading us to do. It is, as he said rightly, it is clearly defined there. When we walk by the flesh or in the flesh, there is destruction when we will go down. But when we walk in the Spirit of God, with the Spirit of God, it's always exponentially we will grow till, till we reach the stature of Jesus Christ, till we become Christ-like. So the choice is all ours. Let us all make a wise choice to follow and to walk in the, in the, in the steps of the Holy Spirit. As in Romans it says, those that are led by the Spirit, they are the sons of God. Those that are led by the Spirit. So if we are not led by the Spirit, then we will not be called the, the children of God. Let us all rise up together and we'll sing that song, Come Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit himself to guide us, to lead us, to empower us, to make a choice, to make a right choice to follow him. From our side, what is needed most is our willingness, our willingness, our being available to God and his Spirit. Just be willing. Just Surrender yourself to God. Yield yourself to the Spirit of God. He will take over. Come, Holy Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing. Come in your power. I yes, love you, Holy Spirit. You're captivating my soul And every day I grow to love you more Come Holy Spirit Come Holy Spirit Fall on me now I need your anointing Come in your path I love you Lord I love you, Holy Spirit. You're captivating my soul. And every day I grow to love you more. I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my life in your hand, drawing me close. Feel your power renewed. Nothing compares to this place where I can see you face to face. I worship you in spirit and in truth. I'm reaching for, I'm reaching for your heart. You hold my. Nothing compares 
in spirit and in truth. Come, Holy Spirit, we sing once again. Come, Holy Spirit, fall on me now. I need your anointing. Come in your power. I love you, Lord. I love you, Holy Spirit. You captivating my soul. And every day I grow to love you more.
by our own strength we cannot oh God but we yield to you oh God we yield to you Lord we are available oh God and we are committed oh God genuinely in our hearts oh God committed dedicated oh God to follow your ways oh God help each one of us oh God help each one of us oh God to fulfill oh God the plans and the purpose that you have for each one of us oh God empower us oh God by the earth by your anointing holy spirit by your anointing holy spirit fresh oil of god refresh us of god lord jesus lord we thank you lord we thank you lord we receive your holy spirit we receive your holy spirit we receive your empowerment we receive your empowerment we receive your leading holy spirit the lord as your children we are gathered Today, oh God, this morning, oh God, we thank you, Lord, that you have spoken to each one of us, oh God, how to live, how to be controlled, how to be led by your Spirit. We thank you, Lord, and Lord, as your children leave this place, oh God, Lord, leave us, oh God, with your love, my Father. Yes, Jesus, your grace is sufficient for us. And the sweet fellowship and abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us. And yes, all the saints across the world who call upon the name of Jesus now and forevermore. Amen and amen and amen. God bless you all.